Hello guys, this is Aaron from the Deep Sea Haven, saying what's up. Hi, it's Rihanna. That was really corny. <laughs> Just no enthusiasm, <laughs> thrown out there. Today, we'll be talking about remasters that we want to see in this um, upcoming years. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of these could have potential to sell really well in some of these just to bring back a lot of like nostalgia, so that'd be really cool to see. I will be starting off and then we'll be going back and forth. So the first game I want to see is Star Fox 64. I understand that we have a GameCube adaptation, we have the uh, Super Nintendo version where it has Star Fox 64 too. Um, I understand that, but I would like... not. Star I messed that up, but you guys know what I mean. Because <laughs> technically, Star there was Star Fox, Star Fox Two, then Star Fox sixty four. But I would li I liked the story mode of Star Fox sixty four, and I would just like to see it kind of lengthened out. Maybe add a little bit to it. Maybe add some more elements to the game and see a remaster where it's not for the fact of just making money. It's just like kind of like the what they did with the Resident Evil Two remake. I really, really enjoyed it, and I thought it was a really, really good really remake, good. and I felt like they changed a lot without changing the core elements of the game, so that, to me, mattered a lot. Um, maybe fix some of the bugs and kind of mechanics of the game, but still keeping its integrity of an old-school game, like a lot of these remakes lately, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so next is... Uh, Devil May Cry, the original. Um, if you haven't seen it already, I did a whole playthrough of Devil May Cry 1 on the channel. And there's a lot of, um, I guess it would be gameplay issues that you have with it. Like, one thing I'd really like to see fixed is the camera angles. It, it, it Sometimes it makes the game almost unplayable <laughs> because it just, you can't see what's going on. But is, I feel like that would be a great fix. Is it an auto lock camera, or like it auto locks to one area, or is it uh, more like a moving camera? It like auto locks to one area. Okay, then yeah, I can understand. A lot of old school games kind of had that, like uh, Death May Cry, uh, you had God of War. I'm pretty sure some of the Kingdom Hearts games were like that, and you know, it worked for its time. But now that we're relooking okay. at these games, it's it's definitely a hard harder function. Not to be able to kind of adjust the camera to your pleasing. Absolutely. And it's like we saw with the other Devil May Cry's, it got better over time. So we, it's just, it's, it's aged, I wouldn't say badly, but it's aged, definitely. And you can tell playing it compared to any newer game. And I think just like those kind of gameplay fixes will make the game a lot better. And the graphics could definitely have a nice beautification. And then I think it would be very popular because the Devil May Cry series is still pretty popular. Devil May Cry 5 just came out not too long ago. So. Uh, yeah, it came out I think 2019. Um, yeah. We do have that so that will be on the channel. She will be completing all the Devil May Cry's including DMC. So keep an eye out for that. If you're watching that after the fact you always can look back in our playlist. Our playlist will either have the whole Devil May Cry series or if you want to just see one of the Devil May Cry's that will be there as an option also. Absolutely. Because it's all up to your, your liking, and we can I can understand, I know quite a few people who like Devil May Cry 1, but don't like Devil May Cry 2, but really like Devil May Cry 3. So it makes it easier so that way you can choose your viewing options. Uh, so the next game that I'll be moving on to is the Jack and Dex series. I, I love that series so much. Don't get me wrong, the first one definitely, definitely, definitely has its problems. Yeah. And I would like to see, with the remake, uh, some of the kind of, like, plot holes fixed between all three of the games. Because I feel like, from the first game, they didn't know they would be making a sequel. And they make the character super edgy for no reason. <laughs> and then he decides to talk, you know, and, like, everybody's like, oh, he talks, you know. So, I feel like slight little things could have made it, it kind of maybe, like, an ease into a type of thing where... Oh, if you beat Jack 1, here's a little, like, prelog to Jack 2. Okay. How the situation happened, what's going on. Because, to be honest, when you first get thrown into it, it's kind of like, okay, this is the game, deal with it. <laughs> Some of the levels had had their problems, and once again, being o older school, I did beat them when I was a child, and now it seems like I'm struggling with a lot of the mechanics now for the fact that I'm used to better ways of going at those mechanics. Not saying the mm -hmm. mechanics are bad per se, but 
bad in a modern sense, if that makes sense. I, I didn't like that the way that, you know, like, oh, modern sense, if that makes sense. But, <laughs> but yeah, then you have Jack 3 that's kind of, to be honest, the weird child out. Black sheep. Yeah. And I, that's my favorite for the fact that it's so different than the rest of the series, but in the long term of things, it doesn't really fit. It's kind of like, if you look at the Fable series, mm -hmm. Fable 1 and 2 really fit, and then you have Fable 3 that's just like the odd man out. And in that sense, Fable 3 was terrible. I love the Fable series. But as a game itself, it's bad. As a Fable game, it holds a special place in my heart. That makes sense. That's another game I would like to see remake, but that <laughs> could be a part two. But yeah, with the Jack and Dex series, I just feel like they, they, they could add a little bit to it, help with the story, and uh, make it so it's a little bit more enjoyable with the gameplay mechanics. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my next one is Fallout, the original. I've heard really, really good things about the story, that the, spo that the story in it is like the best out of all of the Fallouts. But the game's graphics and there, the I heard that there was a lot of gameplay issues. I've watched somebody play the game and they walked around with a broken leg for like three hours of gameplay because they didn't know how to fix it and they were just trying to figure out how to get that done. I feel like if they fix the graphics, fix the gameplay, it would be really, really great. And after the big fail Fallout 76 was, I think we need to go back to the roots of Fallout. And <laughs> but see, you say back to the roots of Fallout, but then you have Fallout 3 that completely changed the original two Fallouts. That's where true. Where they were top-down perspective, more of like... Uh, more like a puzzle game aspect... And nothing like the Fallout 3. Nothing. Yeah. Well, Fallout 3 was really good, but then people felt like Fallout 4 wasn't as good. So I feel like there needs to be a middle between what they're going with Fallout 3 and with the original ones. Because if they go too far towards what Fallout 3 was, they went overboard and people didn't like it. I don't think they went overboard. I think it was more along the lines that they promised more than they could handle. Yeah. But I feel like that was the same thing happened with the Elder Scrolls Online. And the same thing with Fallout 76, because I feel like those are very similar to each other. It's very online-oriented. And the problem with a lot of those games is, if I'm playing the Elder Scrolls, I want it to be a single-person experience. Okay. If I if I can have somebody, I want that to be an option. That was and I feel thing. like I should have no negative effects from it. That was my thing with Fallout 76, because when I play a Fallout game, I want it to be single-player, by myself. So when they said it was multiplayer, I was like, okay, that's fine, as long as there is a single-player single option, and that's what a lot of people were upset about, was that there was not. Exactly, so with this Fallout 1, I think it would be really cool if they were able to, like, implement maybe a two-player. I think that would be really fun, like, yeah. like where it's like a split screen, or you're able to play, like, landline style, where, like, it's one party, you know. And I think that would be difficult, of course, but I think it's manageable, and I think it would be a lot of fun. And it would bring a game, a game style that's no longer here, back to life. So I think that'd be really cool. So I wouldn't want them to make it like Fallout 3. I want it to be Fallout 1. I want it to be oh, the OG, yeah, but it's, it's such a grander scale. I could agree with that. So the next game I'm moving on to is SS Tricky. It's uh, <laughs> a snowboarding game made for the GameCube. I'm pretty sure they had some for the PS2. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty yeah. sure, like, it definitely reached quite a bit of different, uh, brands, I guess. And I just loved the series. It was kind of like the skate. Snowboarding. Yeah, skate of snowboarding. Because it's not like Tony Hawk for the fact that, if, like, there were some realistic elements to it. Like, if you did tilt too much, you would fall and stuff like that. And you'd get sometimes some really funny reactions when you moved and stuff like that in certain falls so it kind of reminded me of the skates ragdolling <laughs> that everybody loved <laughs> so if you've never watched us uh like seen us a strict i really recommend recommend it it's a really really cool game um yeah I, I would love a remake of it i wouldn't i wouldn't mind all of them be remade and kind of put on one disc i mean they didn't really have a story so that's kind of unfortunate but with sports games you really don't get that all too much um, I will give, like, a shout-out to, like, UFC 3. I thought that was a really good game. It had a decent story for, like, a sports game. Like, 
only type of sports game that you really get like any story with is the WWE games, but at the same time, that's sports entertainment, not just sports. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, I don't know about any NBA games, but I know football. Like, they usually don't have any stories. I think the NBA games, they, they're starting to implement that, so congrats to them, and I'm really happy to see that. The fact that I feel like it's an untouched area of the yeah. gaming community, and I'm happy that sports are finally seeing that it could happen, and I mean, they could add it to SS Tricky. I mean, a story mode, a true story mode would be awesome. Would you also want, like, a career mode, kind of like... That's like, what I mean, like, a story mode where it's, like, a career mode, or, like, you have all these different, uh, like, snowboarders you can choose from, maybe add the option to make your own, exactly. or something like that, and you earn medals to unlock more characters and different snowboards and stuff like that. So you could do that with your own character, maybe get a brand and build your own, and yeah. build the empire, and, like... Try, try to become the best in the world facing these characters. And I feel like even if it's not a remake, maybe a revamp of the series, I yeah. would be also fine with completely. Uh, so that's moving on to Rihanna's next one. Uh, Manhunt, which I also played through if you want to check that out. Uh, Manhunt is like very stealth-based game. It requires a lot of patience to get through, but it's not a bad game. I feel like one thing that they definitely could fix is the story the story is just it's it doesn't really make sense I guess it does but it feels like there's things missing and especially with as you play through you unlock things and you get to like read about the get different gangs and how they're part of the manhunt universe and it's kind of like why didn't you incorporate this into the game and i remember talking about that with some subscribers as i was streaming it and i feel like that that definitely if they could do that more that would i think make the gaming experience much better i feel like with that game the problem a lot of the problem was was it had to be rushed out super quickly at that time for the fact that they were scared that it wouldn't even be allowed to touch shells yeah because a lot of a lot of different countries and stuff were looking frowned upon it because a lot of accusations that came with that game and a lot of things that happened with that game so i feel like instead of all their hard work going to kind of waste these mechanics were at the time revolutionary but at the same time flawed at the same time yeah. so it came down to this game will either come out or it won't and i'm happy that they did for the fact if i do want to get manhunt 2 for you to yeah i'll play through manhunt 2 i i my brother used to have that game and it, it, they definitely improved on Manhunt, the original, from what I remember. So, I feel like, you know, continue to moving forward, you know what I mean, with games is a good thing. Yeah. And I feel like a game like that, where it did have its flaws, but at the same time, I mean, every game I think we've talked about has had its flaws. Of course, every game has a flaw. It's No game, I would say, is 100% perfect. There's always something that could be fixed. Aaron's like... There's one game where I disagree. What game? That's uh, Dragon Age Origins. Yeah, and, yeah, I know you like your Dragon Age games. Oh, the rest of them all have horrible problems. <laughs> Dragon Age 2 was way too short. I beat that game in a day and a half. Like, like half a day, I mean. Inquisitions, God, is it boring sometimes. Cause it's just too open world, where Origins kind of had like a, a path. Yeah. Hey, follow this path. Oh, you don't want to? That's okay this path <laughs> you know? so i didn't mind it and i loved it i thought the character development was amazing and the other game i would say that i didn't i didn't really see flaws in it was fable one but to me there's a lot of like nostalgia goggles through it and, and i'll admit to that i really will but i feel like everybody has those games where you're just like are you mad like perfect bully <laughs> And I, I, I see I disagree already but th that, that's the thing about games though is you can have a perfect game where I'm like oh I don't like this I don't like this I don't like this Yeah. you're like well I liked that and I like this and well you're saying this is one of the worst features this is one of the best features actually if you look at it like this so that's kind of what I love and so this first one I'm going to say it and then there will be a second half to this Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and Sonic GX I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the first half, and then you'll see where I'm going into after she speaks, because there's back and forth. I want to re remaster on both of them. It's a very controversial game, to be honest. Sonic in general is super controversial. For fact, if you have Sonic 06, you <laughs> 06, um, 
Sonic Boom. If you haven't watched the game, Grumps, just look at them. They have a 20-minute video of all the glitches I dealt with. 20-minute video. Yeah, I know Sonic's got pure glitches. glitches. There was a glitch in Sonic Boom where you literally could just fly over the map and do anything. It, 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 was, a, it was a rough game. But I'll still stand by and say this, the original Genesis games were amazing, and I even liked Sonic DX because it was a good game. It wasn't good for the fact that it was perfect. It was good for the fact that I could sit down, I played it, I beat it, and I enjoyed it. Was there parts that made me mad as a kid? Of course. Or there certain things like, okay, why is his mouth still moving after he's done talking? <laughs> why is my leg somehow in my ear? As a kid, I didn't. I was like, okay, this is weird, but okay, it's Sonic. And I guess he was one of like some people's Mario, you know, where yeah. no matter what, you'll always love that game. And then the same thing happens with the Sonic Adventure 2 battle. I love the Sonic levels, love the Shadow levels. Am I the biggest fan of the Knuckles levels where I'm sitting there looking for 30 minutes? Not really. To be 100% honest with you. But those Chows make it worth it. Those little bastards. Love them. That's it. I want a game about Chows, alright? If we're getting serious here on an emotional level, I need Chows and I need them now. Alright, give me a game where it's just Chows. I pet them all day, I talk to them, I feed them. That give me that. That so cute. Give me like a Tamagotchi game of Chows. Don't they, they do have a Sonic game where you raise them, don't you? That's Sonic DX and Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Hmm. After each level in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, you can check on them. Sonic DX, you can go in there at any point. Sonic DX is more of like an open world. Okay. I love Chaos. If you ever send me anything, because I do plan to get a P.O. box sooner or later, I would love a Chow. An evil Chow. Because that's where it's at, dog. But besides that point is, I, I, I just, I would love it. So moving on to Rihanna's last game, just a little like tidbit beforehand. I have no clue about this game, so I really can't make any like comments on it, so... Yeah, that's all. This one's gonna be all her. Okay. So, when I was younger, me and my brother used to play this game. It's called Cardinal Sin. Sin being, like, the big word on it. It's spelled S-Y-N, not, like, Sin, Sin. And it's, like, a fighting game. It's, like, it's kind of like Mortal Kombat, but it was, I mean, for, it's a PS1 game. So, for, like, to see all that blood and that fighting and that stuff, it was really fun to, like, battle with him. And, like, I'm gonna kill you, I swear to God. And, uh, you... Um, there was a single player and there was obviously a multiplayer where we'd battle each other, but the single player, like, you fought every single one of the people and then you had, like, a big, huge boss with, like, a dragon and shit, and it was really fun. The only thing was we had a PS2, not a PS1, so we couldn't save it, so my brother never beat it, and, uh, I just, I feel like that game was, that game was, like, my childhood, and I, if I ever saw that come back out, I would be so happy, because it was really great, and I had a lot of fun with it. Like, you could play as, like, Cleopatra, and beat up people, and it was, I miss that game a lot. But it looks old, I looked at pictures of it, it looks old, like, you can definitely tell it's a PS1 game. I definitely feel like it could be remastered and be really good. Okay, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Going back on the Sonic, yes. I want a Sonic Adventure 3. I, I honestly... will be honest, yes, it's not a remaster, and I know that's the point, not the point of this video, but I, I'm using this to lead into the next video that's that's hopefully will be coming out. Sequels. Sequels of games that we want. They could be a one-off series. They could be eight. I don't care. It's like, oh, I liked this game, but I wish there was more about this character. Well, why not, why not a game for it? It's happened before. I mean, we have Luigi's Mansion. That's probably somebody's dream some, somewhere. Oh, I want I want Luigi to hunt ghosts. And this is my OC. Please don't steal. And Nintendo's like, oh, this is my OC. I steal. And it happened. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Sonic Adventure 3. Mainly focusing on Chows. Big thing. Yeah, if it doesn't have... A child game. <laughs> um, so this is going to be the end of the video just want to say if you did notice the technical difficulty about 10 minutes in or somewhere around sorry hopefully it doesn't happen again if you if you did my my apologies but if you don't mind make sure you give a like 
Oh, ring the notification bell so that way you can be alerted whenever we upload or we start streaming or we when we do whatever. Uh, don't forget to check out our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We try to upload on there images, talks. Uh, Rain has been retweeting some pretty funny comments from other people we enjoy. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Anything else you have to say? Uh, thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. So this is Eric from Deep Sea Haven saying peace, peace. Hopefully you enjoyed.